welcome. Welcome to the uh, Naoto's Nerd Power. Power Nerd Hour? Naoto's Nerdy Power Hour. Nerdy Power Hour. My name is Naoto, the one of the Knife Nerds at Knifeware. Um, well, thanks for joining us today. Um, we do this a live program every Tuesday afternoon at the 1 p.m. Mountain Time. We change the programs the uh, every every month. I do this a once a month, and we do have the uh, regular sharpening um, classes as well, regular sharpening program as well as the uh, Knifeware 101 with the uh, Kevin and Chris Lord. Today is my turn. This is our, um, we call it the uh, Nerdy Power Hour, where we talk about a little bit more nerdy stuff about knife sharpening and also knife in general. Um, again, my name is Naoto. I'm pretty fortunate enough that I get to talk to some of the blacksmith, um, knife makers, sharpeners, uh, all in Japanese, you know, like, you know, got a little bit of secret language going on. You got the inside scoop. A Le little bit. And, uh, yeah, I get to kind of uh, talk to them in person. And uh, right before the pandemic, I was able to actually go back to Japan and see those people, blacksmith, knife makers, knife sharpeners, and got a bunch of knowledge that we didn't have. And since, you know, this COVID hit, we were sharing those information with everyone like yourselves uh, watching that the uh, program. Today, we're talking about how to bring back the, what we call it, the Damascus finish. Okay, so that's, that's our topic. Uh, the title says acid etching, but we decided to cover an alternative way, alternative method to bring that the Damascus I finished back up as well. Yeah, so, two, two different techniques today. Two right? different techniques, absolutely. Cool. Well, uh, right away, Funny Usyk tuned in and says, Howdy, y'all. Good to see you, buddy. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Sven Sven also tuned in. Uh, just looking forward to the show. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. As, the, as always, we, we see good regulars coming in and, uh, you know, joining the. Uh, if there's any. Just ask any questions on uh, the comment section, and we encourage the discussion going on the uh, in the comment section as well. Um, before we get to it, uh, there are a few um, one or two announcements that I would like to uh, point out. The uh, I've been telling you folks, uh, the uh, the audience is uh, quite a quite a some time now. The we did interview a Maruyama-san from the Hado Sakai, the sharpener. Uh, we managed to uh, get all the uh, sections edited, and now it's ready to be uploaded. Uh, all the subtitling is done. All the transcription. That has been literally sweating <laughs> and almost bleeding over it. Interpretation and the, all the subtitling is done. All he needs is Nathan's approval of my bad English. So uh, your English is fixed. fantastic. There's like I think the last one was 20 minutes long, and I maybe fixed two things. It's It'll be fixed. So um, yeah, just stay tuned. It should be up uh, today or tomorrow. The I think tomorrow will be yeah tomorrow we're, we're doing, or we're yeah. Wednesday probably yeah. So but yeah, um, stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel if you're not, and that way you won't miss it. Yeah, and the uh, we'll have the uh, new videos every Monday, pretty much. So uh, you know, for those of you who missed the uh, Mike's a uh, big salami. Uh, video. There's a new one just came up, um, you know, starting from the, hey, got kind of big salami. <laughs> yeah, make sure that was yeah, pretty. Just, yeah. I had a good laugh about that. Yeah. I didn't know that one was coming. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Sean Buckle says, uh, this will be interesting. Never tried to re-etch a knife before. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of our regular viewers do some more advanced sharpening, so yeah. it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see what people do, yeah. uh, what people learn. Uh, and Greg Jones says, uh, great timing. Just got a new... Um, Go my Damascus knife yesterday. I was wondering how I bring it back if I ever thinned the geometry. Yeah. So the um, for those of you who don't who are not really familiar with what the Damascus steel is and what what were you talking about? Uh, so let's just set up set the uh, set a little bit of expectation. Explain what I'm going to talk about. So Japanese knives are made with the mostly um, ninety percent knives. Ni Japanese knives are made out of two different type of steels. One goes in the center and two laminates that the core steel to protect, it's like a bubble wrap for the uh, porcelain and stuff like that. So 
So that will protect the hard steel from breaking it easily, right? So what happens is that the uh, when they decided to put this laminated soft steels on the outside, they can do multiple layers like croissant, like lasagna, right? Yeah. When you cut the set, say when you have the multiple layers, that will make a really beautiful pattern because say when you cut the um, croissant in diagonal, you see all the layers exposed, right? Mm -hmm. That's how. Oh, here we'll uh, this switch cameras around. This one's way better. There we go. That's how this each line represents. So this type of steel made out of one core steel, the VG10 stainless steel, and multiple layers on the outside. When they force and when they sharpen, sharpening is like cutting in diagonal to the uh, the bread, the uh, you know the croissant. That will show each layer really nicely. But the um, when they do something like this, oh, what happens is that the um, they will usually polish this whole blade up and do something to bring this back up. Often, something like this Mastani, this one's the Mastani VG10, um, knife like this, this has been go gone through this a uh, sandblast. Oh, here. Yeah. That's better. Yeah, look at that. So they put in this box, and they have nozzle, and that will shoot the, either it's a steel, it's like very small steel powder, or the glass bees, and they hit on this uh, surface. And what happens is that the uh, these are usually made with the mildly soft steel and slightly hotter steel. So mm -hmm. softer part of steel get scratched so much more that uh, becomes white. I was wondering why that worked. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. And a mildly hotter one, they don't get scratched as much. Cool. So they polish up pretty nice. Then they put that on the uh, those uh, sandblast. Cool. And there, there's now there's a different word in Japan that is used for this style finish sometimes. The uh, right. we Japanese knife makers often refer this finish as sumi nagashi. Sumi nagashi means a uh, ink floating or the swirling. Mm -hmm. So there is a technique in the Japanese art community that they drop the uh, those inks on the water and they you just swirl it around mm -hmm. and put the paper on top there is a very similar yeah. technique here as well like you know i, I have a type. friend who did some silk scars i have a silk scarf yeah, yeah. she did that yeah it's really cool stuff yeah so yeah. like you know there is a so, similar, similar like hydro dipping that people see on instagram yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah 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 exactly um tyler just was wondering that last knife was the kato sg2 correct no this one is the kumo masakage oh, okay. kumo that's, uh, that's that guy, Tyler. Yeah. Right. So similar looking in a lot of ways. Similar looking. Yeah. The um, I think it's just got a uh, pattern different. The uh, this is more like a dent hammer pattern, where the uh, Kato HD2 has this a uh, um, chevron Damascus kind of look to, mm. to it. Okay. Cool. It's more like a cut rather than the dent. Right. Okay. And Damon Inspector says, uh, Tal Kevin Nanto needs a sandblasting station. <laughs> I think he's right. I think we should totally get a little sandblasting booth. Sandblasting is fun, but the uh, we we found another way that we could do actually as yeah. well. So let's let's go with that. Yeah, um, stay tuned for that. So when let's start from the uh, this Mustani. I'm just gonna have the uh, this acid thing later on because yeah. So you've got acid. if you look off to the right there on the hand cam, Nanto's got. His, his secret acid bath. The um, I usually keep them in that the uh, uh, tube, the uh, those uh, piping tubes, the for right. uh, plumbing and stuff. Uh, it it cut, got leaked the other day, so I'm just temporarily <laughs> oh, no. keeping them in this a, a container. Uh, don't keep them in a glass jar. Apparently, it's going to not a gla glass is fine. Yeah. metal like metal lids uh, and stuff yeah. will do. No, It'll great. be great, yeah. yeah. I think we should probably, before we get into this, do a bit of a safety disclaimer, right? Yeah. Because you want to have certain, we're working with ferric chloride here. Yeah, ferric can be chloride. It, it, yeah, like if you um, know so much on steel, 
Uh, ferric chloride basically is a type of acid that can uh, melt steel right, a little bit. Um, when that, um, some people actually acid etch the uh, copper in the ferric, uh, acid, ferric chloride acid. That um, becomes very dangerous uh, when you, it's, it's, uh, if, if it's steel, as long as you neutralize it with a whole bunch of yeah. the uh, um, um, baking soda, yeah. it should be fine and just, you know, dilute them with right. a lot of water. Uh, but the um, actually etching copper in yeah. that thing will create that little bit of toxic okay, uh, no. agent. So you never You're ever right. want to train. But, but in general, we should wear what safety gloves? Yeah, safety yeah. gloves, glasses, yeah, glasses. Or, actually, I have, yeah, I have glasses, glasses right now. So yeah, cool. Yeah, you don't want to drink them out of it. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't drink it. No. But yeah, so it's general. Uh, things just be careful um, sure. so why do I why do we need to bring that Damascus back what do you mean by bring it back as these knives have like already beautiful finish already right what happens and we talk them over and over in our uh, in our show is that the uh, these knives uh, requires what we call it the thinning process as you sharp uh, as the, as you sharpen them Thinning basically is to um, you know thin the whole bevel or the blade because it that's how thin the knife is it, it cuts better right in in general so um, mm -hmm. that's how how we do and thinning requires basically a, a whole um, bunch of a um, yeah like so you have to lay this whole bevel whole bevel flat on the stone mm -hmm. and what happens is that it scratches up the uh, this yeah so bevel you that here. beautiful finish and you're you're scuffing it and changing it yeah, yeah. Cool. so we're gonna start with that right we're gonna start by sitting the knife yeah a little bit i'm not doing a full today's focus is Today's focus is to bring that back. So cool. I'm just gonna scratch it up enough that you know it's there. Cool, awesome. Well, thanks for everybody that's tuning in so far. Uh, it looks like we got a lot of folks that are looking forward to learning this technique. Um, hopefully, you guys can hear me over the the stone there. But uh, Tyler Leach has a good question. Just you know, get started, and then I'll, I'll pop his question yeah. up because uh, I think it's a great question that. Good chance to kind of dispel some some myths, I think. But. Right. Can you pass me the the, the paper towel, please? Yeah, got it. Okay. All right. So, uh, if you're just tuning in, we're doing uh, acid etching Damascus knives today. We're going to be um, well, now is going to be thinning a knife a little bit, and then showing you how to bring that pattern back with a couple of different techniques. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is the I am going to put this bevel down flat. On this stone here and sharpen them a little bit. Uh, this particular stone here is the uh, Shapton uh, 220, 220 grit. And you like that one because it, it grinds the steel. Right? It's faster, yeah. yeah. Cool. So yeah, uh, Tyler, you had a good question yeah. um, because we are, you know, he's asking about the Kato knife, and and so kind of building on that. So have you guys noticed any difference in the Masakage Kumo since uh, Anderson stopped making them and Ikeda sent took over? Um, not really, because again, Ikeda san has been a powerhouse at the Anryu Hamono for last two, three years. Yeah, he's been doing a lot of work for, for a while. I mean, yeah. Before that, he was an apprentice and he was closely involved in stuff. So, yeah, like, so, no, really. The uh, I think I see them a little bit more. Um, I I like the uh, Kumo better these days because the taper is uh, what I see. The taper, basically, by me, the, uh, from here, the taper from that the, the uh, where the, the, heel, uh, the that the the heel to the tip is a little bit more even throughout rather than a uh, it was a little bit more big like thick and goes super thin mm. and like this yeah where Ikeda san does a little bit more even taper oh, okay a little more consistent yeah. smooth yeah. transition yeah yeah I mean I think that's the great thing about him finally being able to take over is as much as he has learned from and and appreciates. Uh, uh, appreciates what he's learned from uh, from, from Anderson. I think 
I think he's probably been able to come out with some fresh eyes and maybe see some mm -hmm. little bit of room for improvement in some way. Kind of, you know, he's going to bring him up the ballot, but, but still remain pretty faithful. Um, James Wang has a good question while we're doing some spinning here. Yeah. I noticed some of the stainless steel cladding, mm -hmm. Yaxel Go series, for example, mm -hmm. doesn't react with ferric chloride. Is there any other way to etch those types of cladding? Well, the uh, Yaxel Go uses the uh, the acid, not acid edge, but the uh, this this the type, sandblast? the sandblast, right? So um, I think it just like reacts. Some fast than others. Okay, that's what it is. Because so we, it just takes longer to react. Yeah, maybe. Like if you leave it a little bit longer, it may work a little bit better. But uh, or it just work, doesn't really use the uh, that much of different steel to like oh. outside layer. Uh, these two softer and like mildly harder steel, they have to be uh, different enough. Yeah. Um, and also, so they're going to react differently. Right? And, yeah. yeah. And this one is like nickel Damascus. They fold the nickel in between. Yeah. Nickel shines as well. Totally uh, yeah. So you, it, you you will see that little dull dose color when you even like do that type of uh, etching. Because I we've done acid etch on like the ones that doesn't have the nickel um, yeah. in it, yeah. and they do work okay. Yeah. It's not the best and fantastic, but okay. So I'm just gonna do this. Uh, we had a good question um, on the Discord. Are we? Uh, are you? Sure. Are you good to take another question? Yeah. Okay. So Sheffield Sharpening Shed uh, yeah. on their Discord says, question for today's stream: What's the difference in result from this process? Thin polish etch, and then thin etch polish. Some people do it kind of both ways. Um. Thin, 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 yeah. polish the steel, yeah. then etch it, yeah. as opposed to thinning it, then etching it, and then polishing it. Well, I do. Um, so etching, I actually do a thin polish, etch, then mildly polish after. Oh, okay. Cool. I do. I do take a little bit off of the, just even it out a little bit. So. Yeah, so James said, oh, sorry, no, sorry, we, uh, we have a lot of wobbling there. And also, just like. Do you want me to grab your regular uh, stone holder? Yeah, that, that's Yeah, great. sounds good. And a lot of, oh, hey, Nate. Oh, Nathan's gone. I'm just going to keep traveling. This is terrible. It just makes puddle of water right here. But the um, so what I'm doing here is the uh, put bevel down flat and go. Yeah. I, I just want to show everybody. Nauto uses this stone holder so much that it is <laughs> adhered permanently to the rag that it lives on. It's just all one fossilized piece now. There we go. Yeah. So it's just like splash of water all over this place. Oh yeah. The uh, the. This desk is uh, this is terrible. We're we're gonna upgrade our studio pretty soon, and we'll we'll have a better setup. We'll have a sturdy table as opposed to a wobbly desk. Yeah, this is just the, the desk, right? The uh... yeah. So James Blank says, um, talking about the the stainless steel yep. cladding that wasn't really etched. He said he left it the night for over five minutes. The SG two core turned black, but the cladding didn't change at all. The uh, five, like I sometimes leave in them longer. Mm. So uh, again, the uh, that maybe the um, maybe that uh, depends on what type of like that reminds me the uh, the you know polish polish at etch and mm? so when you actually polish them after etching, you get a little bit different results as well. So that. Uh, I'll, Talk a little bit about that. Okay, cool. But so now it's really probably hard to see in on the camera. Yeah, if, you, if you bring it up close to the to the lens, it'll change focus. Just give it a sec. And it scratched up quite a bit. But, but uh, there we go. Yeah. It scratched up quite a bit. You see the little like clear line. 
that's the initial thinning process oh. here. Um, you could still see the Damascus uh, or the layers of steel a bit, but it's not as clear, right? It kind of all blended in kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I'll show you the uh, how it looks after this stone here. So James says it'll try longer for next time and hopefully the steel will react. Would you want to maybe mask off the edge of the knife or something? Or some people use the uh, um, like the nail polish um, oh, on it to and then you uh, kind of paint it on more precisely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. that people do. Well, if anybody else has questions for now, though, um, feel free to pop them in the comments. If you're just tuning in, we are acid etching Damascus knives today. So now we've got two different knives, and he's going to do two different methods of acid etch just to show you, or two different methods of etching. No, it's the two different methods of popping at the uh, right. Damascus up. Well, one's, one's an acid etch, and one is uh, a different technique. It's, yeah, different technique. It just imitates the, um, the look of the uh, um, uh, sandblasting. Okay, gotcha. Cool, well he's gonna give the nail polish a try it sounds like. Yeah, that's a good idea, I like that. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, we got a new video on the channel, uh, Mike's Salami Battle, uh, which came out yesterday. It's pretty funny. Uh, and we've got uh, Naoto's, if you didn't hear at the beginning of the episode, Naoto's got a new blacksmith interview that's going to be coming out. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, and keep an eye out for that. Probably tomorrow uh, that video is going to come up on the channel. Hey, Nathan. Mm -hmm. Can you grab me a uh, another Shapton stone? Yeah. Um, anything is fine, like a little oh, finer one. Yeah. yeah Shapton glass, please. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So... I'm just working on the bevel with the uh, Knifeware 1000. What we'll do is that the, they will make me look a little bit more matte type of finish. There are a few spots that's actually a uh, little bit more low spots, like as you can see. Right here and right here, it's got a little bit more convexity going. Uh, I am not to go, I am not going to work until that's gone today just a time but if you don't like any low spots like these um i will urge you to just keep going until you don't see any of those low spots you don't want to find it's 500. oh that's fine yeah, yeah. this 1000 like knifer 1000 stone is great uh, one of my favorite stones, especially when I'm thinning, because a few reasons. It's easy. Uh, it's soft. It touches on the uh, knife very nice and even. As well, it leaves the a little bit more dark pattern on the blade. Kind of a little bit more dark grayish color. Mm -hmm. That will tell you the exactly where... The knife has some high spots and low spots. You see right here, this particular one in the middle there, it's got a quite a bit of low spots because it's the lighter in color, right? Yeah. And darker on the both ends. Oh, interesting. Um, again, I'm not going to actually um, take all the low spots out today because that's not my purpose. But just so you know, because Japanese knives are, these are like handmade, hand sharpened knives, right? This particular knife, the Mastani san's knife, the blade itself is not hand forged per se, you know, like the, you know, forging process from the, uh, from chunk of steel and uh, using that the spring hammer, but the, uh, the sharpening process is done by hand. So the sharpening process, they use this big vertical wheel. And when they put the, knife on the vertical wheel, there will be some low spots. And to eliminate all that is really just hard. So um, there will be some low spots hanging, like this side is slightly less on this side, right? Mm -hmm. And a little bit more on the other side. You see them, it's not a problem. 
Uh, if you are so particular that you don't like any of those, you can keep going until uh, you don't see any uh, low spots with the uh, very um, finer stone, like um, uh, no core stone, like two twenty. Right. Uh, Sven Finn has a great question here. Mm -hmm. What kind of polish are you looking for before the etch or the sandblast fix? I have a Santopia that I hope to repair after mm -hmm. the show. It's not much, actually. Here. What I would do, after kind of even the bevels out, I just use the uh, those um, sandpapers, the, the uh, waterproof uh, sandpaper that uh, it's just going to even the uh, this... Is this like a 800 or 1000? This yeah. one here is, I think I just used the 400 and uh, 800 um, grit. So you're just looking for a consistent pattern. Yeah, exactly. Do that. Cool. And so it's in the back. Spin, spin, let us know what kind of uh, Sentoku you're etching after this. I'm curious to know. And sometimes, if you want to leave that the uh, core steel really shine, uh, you should bring it up to a uh, really fine stone to, you know, get the core steel shines, right? Like a uh, 4,000 grit, uh, which I'm not look really looking to do today, but you can definitely bring it up to something like 4,000, 8,000 to have the uh, the core steel, like almost mirror polish. Yeah. Because the core steel is hard. Mm. Core steel is going to be much harder, so even the blasting with sand, they won't scratch at the core steel. It's not going to change much. No, much. Okay. James has a, says he has an OCD with low spots uh, yeah. and just has to get rid of them all. It's, uh, I, it's I, I, I totally get it. I understand, but the, uh, there will be some low spots, even if you spend um, you know, $3,000 a knife. Right. You probably get a little bit of low spot, except a few people like a, um, um, I think, no, a few people like a, uh, who is it, the, uh, uh, that guy, Hinora san. Uh, <laughs> I knew you were going to say Hinora, yeah. Mazaki san. Because how they finish is that they always finish on the, uh, those natural stones to mm -hmm. kind of get the, get, get rid of all the low spots, right? Okay. So it's so much easier to put down that. Because the stone's so hard. Not only yeah, they 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 most people don't put it on the stone to finish. Oh okay. Th those stones, they oh, just do wheel. It's just a wheel. Wheel, yeah. wheel, um, yeah. then buffing wheel. Yeah. And buffs, buffs, buffs. Right. Well, it's uh, cost effective, right? Yeah. yeah, and buffs are so, so rounded as yeah. well. Yeah. Um. So not actually <laughs> many puts on the, the stone to finish. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. So um. And this just really takes a lot more time, right? So, um, yeah, a few cool. people like uh, Mazaki and uh, who is it? The uh, Mazaki or someone like a, uh, who, who who am I talking about? Mazaki Hinora, they always finish uh, their bevel with the uh, uh, stones, which is like these stones. Yeah. Make them flat, then, uh, then do it really good. Interesting. Um, other stuff, other people like a... Um, you have less low spots on the massage sans knife. He mm. does not finish each blade with the on the stone like these, but he uses this technique to uh, minimize the oh, uh, okay. the low spots. Huh. Is it a secret technique? I don't think it's that much of a secret, <laughs> but the uh, it's the actually the uh, this uh, company called Tarafusa uses the same technique as well. Yeah. So basically what they do is that the um, after they sharpen the bevel with the vertical, big vertical stone, yeah. they put on this a um, super long bell sander. Oh, okay. Super long. Yeah. It's even longer than like Nathan. <laughs> it, so it sounds like what, uh, I've been it, to an axe factory in Sweden, it sounds yeah. like what they have. It wraps Nathan pretty good. Holy shit. That's a so, big belt. Yeah, it's a super big belt and they splash the water on top of it. Huh. So belt, when you press it down the belt, it creates the natural convexity. Yeah, right. Right? Yeah. And that's how those guys do. Oh. Yeah. So it balances out the concavity from the wheel. A little bit, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh. It was kind of interesting. So yeah, that's the that's how they do. Here. 
as you can see here, you can see the, the bevel for sure, right? Because there wasn't like like really a bevel. Oh, yeah. And the, the different uh, the shine. So the low spots, I kind of blended them in with the uh, uh, sandpaper. It's uh, I use uh, 400 and uh, I think 800 or 1,000 grit sandpaper. But you don't see the Damascus as much, right? I don't know how you can see. It's a little bit more polished, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this um Sahiro polishing compound we started to carry uh, pretty recently. Uh, we had a few before to test them out, and we decided to bring them in for those of you like for yourselves uh, viewers who is interested in doing this type of stuff again. So this Sahiro polishing compound. Um, 320 grit. They have 320 grit and 600 grit. We we found that 300 grit works really well. I'll show you how uh, it should be done. Sure. So this is a really fine polishing compound. Uh, what they you recommend to do is to use it on the lapping plate, which they they sell them for 100 bucks the metal plate, which uh, <coughs> right. It's, these these one we sell them are like I think ten dollars or something like that. Yeah. And we decided not to bring that just the metal plate. Yeah, I mean you could probably use the back of your Kensho diamond plate. Yeah. Or your or your, exactly. your uh, stone there. What I've decided to do today is to just wash this one really well with the uh, with water. This the Shapton diamond uh, glass no Shapton glass plate. The back of that is like really nice and nice and flat. Nice. So what I'm going to do is the I'm just gonna put the little bit of powder right here. What they do is that they use the uh, little uh, spray bottle to uh, splash the water on. So basically, that, what that means is that you don't need that much water. Mm, okay, I'm just cool. gonna put a little bit of water on. Yeah, that's it. That's enough, like a drop or two. And Here's the key I found is gonna work much better than just um, say polishing on. This is gonna work much better. Look, I press this on here, right? Mm -hmm. And instead of just going back and forth like this, which works good, but it works better when you actually press down a lot more. So okay. I press with whole hand, put the more, um, more um, weight yeah. on it, and do this. I think the reason why this method works better is that the um, sandblast you are basically sanding into the uh, into the blade with the with nice like you know uh, velocity, right? Yeah. So I think it needs a little bit more power to uh, press it against the bevel. Same kind of pressure that you would get from the sandbox. Yeah. Oh, I, that's me. I think. Yeah. But this works a little bit better. James, James got, James Wayne got some of that stuff. Yeah, yeah, he, it yeah. Great. Yeah, it works really good. And he, he sent me the picture. Oh, nice. Yeah. If anybody has stuff they want to show off, if you got a knife that you polish that you want to show off, um, or, uh, you know, maybe a knife that you're working on that you have some questions about, feel free to send in viewer submissions. You can pop them the Discord and, and just tag me or send me a direct message on Discord. If you haven't joined our Discord, you can uh, click the link at the bottom of the description. You can also send them to Nathan at uh, Nightcore.com and we'll, uh, we'll be happy to talk about it during the episode. Um, okay, so yeah, this, this does really actually well. So if you look, this here, hopefully, I'll bring a slightly different look than here, but definitely show the pop that the Damascus up a little bit. I think the light, I think that light is too bright. Mm, I think it's, it's probably just a little too close to the camera too. This guy has a minimum focal length. Yeah, there we go. You see them a little bit? I'm just going to do a comparison to the back. So the back side 
it just um, is sandpaper. You see, I got a little grits on the blade. Yeah, so this side is just a sandpaper. Okay, okay, and this side is with the the, uh, the polish. Cool. Oh, huh. you see, like in person, you see them a little bit better, I think. Yeah, yeah, it looks really consistent in person. Yeah. Um, huh. Cool. Definitely, there are certain spots that were lower, like right here. That hasn't touched on the, uh, the the polishing compound. So if you want to actually make it super even, um, you want to actually do it all the way to the uh, to there's no low spots. Yeah, that makes sense. The uh, sandblast is great because it doesn't matter where whether there's a low spots, high spots, anything. It just like hits and yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's not the. So the sandblast comes handy uh, mm -hmm. for our purpose and how much we just do. Yep. I think these powders do it really well. Also, these are available um, on our website. Yes. Yeah, Suahiro Polishing Powder. Uh, I think Suahiro Polishing Compound. Polishing Compound. I'll put the links in the comments. Sometimes YouTube really it, but I'll see if it lets me. Oh, really? Hey. I saw it like... Here we go. I don't think they like the knife to go in on that thing, Maybe. but all right. Well, if you saw that, let me know. Um, Grant Hendrick tuned in. Good to see you, Grant. Yeah. Uh, great topic today. Thanks, Nato Nathan, for so many great tips. DHL arrived today. Super excited. Thank oh, yeah, the uh, Koi. Yeah, he's got a Koi in a Kiri. Yeah, it's a great knife. The uh, Massage Sons interview that I did live a couple months ago already, yeah. or a month, two months ago. Yeah. Yeah, two months ago. Two months ago. I did a live interview with a massage son two months ago, and now I just finished. Uh, we should shoot the uh, intro and outro on that, the massage son's interview. Oh, we did. oh yeah, right. Yeah, yeah we we'll should. Do that today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. But the, we are going to, like, all the subtitling's done, cutting the pasting, cutting, cutting, <laughs> cutting and yeah. putting actually really nice, uh, um, nice, his, uh, his, Oh, B-roll. B-rolls are yeah. done as well. So it's it's shortened down to uh, 19 minutes yeah. from an uh, hour and a half. Yeah. Cool uh, interview. So it's 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 going to be quite nice to uh, to watch. It's a very watchable piece now. Yeah. And uh, I, I, uh, I share it with the Masai San. Uh, he really liked it. Awesome. And it's mo much more nerdy stuff that we talked about. Yeah. Than saying the, uh, hey, what do you think that Gyuto should be forged? What do you think, you know? The petty should be forged. Yeah, what makes a good petty yeah. or a good buto? Or, yeah, yeah, like what would you do to make your petty how it's supposed to be, yeah, I guess, yeah. right? Yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty interesting. That's very, uh, very nerdy stuff. You can watch the full thing, but the – because uh, we had to do back and forth Japanese and English. Yeah. We we made it to yeah, short, like 19 minutes. Yeah. So that should be up next week. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. Anyways. Speaking, of, speaking of Grant's order, I, I threw something in there that's uh, a top secret. It's a brand oh, new product that we don't we haven't told anybody about yet. Top secret. So I hope you enjoy it, Grant. I think he's he's uh, so here. So this side, as some of you remember, this side had a lot more low spots. So that the uh, it doesn't touch on the low spots as much, so it doesn't pop as much as the other side. It is not going to be as perfect solution and a substitute to the uh, sandblasting, but it will do really really great job. If you're going to a uh, thin your shun your uh, miyabi, um, not so much an acid edge one. But the um, Masakage Kiri. Masakage Kiri works fantastic. Um, yes, yeah, any any the um, Damascus finish knives with the sandblast. One of the things that you can tell uh, whether it is made, it is done by a sandblast or the acid edge is 
Acid Edge usually darkens, darkens the blade first. Then they start to melt the steel on the outside. So if you see the texture on the other side that has like, you know, like a little bit more like highs and lows or little dimples on the, uh, on the, the side of the knife, that is acid etched. If you see more like a mild transition and different, uh, different type of steel, these are uh, sandblasted. Steric acid, which I'm going to use them a little bit later today, is used for a uh, this type of uh, ferric chloride or the ferric acid. is used for this type of acid etch with the nickel and stainless steel, as well as some knife makers use for a um, to bring the hamon. Hamon is one of those uh, things that is um, basically differential heat treatment the quenching line, the different um, line there. It's really subtle, so sometimes they make the uh, solution that's really, really, um, it, they have their formula, right? But they, they use different formulas and lightly swipe on the hamon to bring the hamon up as well. Cool. Okay. Awesome. So now we're on to part two, right? Now we're gonna do the actual acid edge. Yes. As promised. Yes. All right. Where are we? Okay, so what I'm going to do on this guy here, again, I'm going to just do a little bit of thinning, which I don't need, but I'll show you how they change the look. Kind of full process start to yeah. finish, right? Okay. Got time for a couple questions while we do that? Yeah. So, um, so Sven, Sven just said he's uh, thinning out, <coughs> after this, thinning out a yak cell. Ran Sentoku, yep. first Japanese knife I got years ago. Yep. Uh, I've had to fit it quite a bit to increase its performance. Yep. Um, now it works reasonably well. The Damascus finish has suffered. Yeah, yeah. To get it more uniform. Yeah, the uh, run definitely has that. The uh, um, is sandblasted as well as the it is thick to begin with quite a bit. So uh, yeah, Makes sense. yeah. By like, yeah thinning it, it's yeah good job. And uh, if you want to bring the whole. Um, things back up with this. Uh, I would suggest to uh, um, sand the whole blade rather than just the place you right. work so on. Right, get the most uniform look. Exactly, yeah. exactly. The, um, because the, uh, you know, the polishing compound or the uh, the sand grits the, that they, they use yeah. is not necessarily the same as this, right? Yeah, yeah. well. Sven says the result looks great. I'm uh, tempted to get some of the compound uh, when I have a larger order. Yeah. Shipping would be a bit steep to hear right. just the compound. Yeah, yeah. Totally fair. Uh, well, we're dropping like five new lines of knives pretty soon. Uh, we're also getting more stones in stock in the next little bit. Yeah. And some other stuff. So there will be plenty of exciting things to order real soon. Um, and says, uh, but it certainly looks like a much more approachable method than getting some acid slide. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, accessibility, depending on what country you're in, is a huge... Especially huge. at home, like, you don't have to buy a whole, like, gallon of the uh, ferric chloride, yeah, right? right. And, and James Concur says, uh, I restored a yak cell a few days ago, and so your hero powder works perfectly. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, Fred Blakely... Had, uh, had a good question, which I wasn't sure. Can you recommend a good high end 12,000 ish grit soaking stone? Um, yeah, the soaking stone usually is a uh, um, vitrified uh, type of stone that can be uh, soaked. It's like vitrified, basically, is like ceramic stone. Yeah. Um, the who is it? The uh, Kensho, um, Kensho Itadaki. Series has all the way up to 8,000. Um, vitrified 1,200, 12,000. There aren't many that I know of up from, from my head. I think Kensho Itadaki has quite high grit. Kensho Itadaki series, yeah. I okay. think they have up, up to like 8,000 or, uh, I know they have uh, 8,000. I'm not sure, quite, quite sure if they have the 12,000 grit. I have to double check. Kensho Itadaki 
because we only get the ones that we think uh, it serves the purpose right. that we're looking for. Uh, th therefore, we only have 1,000 and 3,000 from Itadaki, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? But the um, they have much more selection. Oh, Greg's got the secret gift. Let's go. Uh, okay. Um, Tyler is wondering. Mm -hmm. uh, another question about Masakari and us. How does the how does Kurosaki-san do the X pattern on the Masakari Shimo? The uh, X patterns or any often a lot of patterns that they they have on the blades are either by hammering mm -hmm. on different type of heads, yeah. or they grind or they cut with the uh, uh, the like an angle grinder. Angle grinder. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The uh, so for the shimo, he angle use the angle grinder to actually cut the cross marks before he forced them. So the, mm. the angle grinder that the, those cuts yep. will be opened up as as he right as and then he forges more yeah yeah and the steel kind of yeah yeah like so he yeah there. before he forges them or in certain um, certain a uh, a, 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 a certain progress yeah. progression he takes it and he. Makes right. that grind because like, there's a lot grinds. of Western blacksmiths that do like really crazy Damascus, like ladder Damascus, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. That. and those are all done by like, cutting and reattaching. Or yeah, yeah, Cool. So yeah, I think he uses the angle grinder for Shimo. The Kumo, like this, the uh, dimple pattern or eye-looking patterns, they were done by a uh, using the hammer to make it dimples. Then they ground, ground, ground down, ground out the dimples to make it be, make that the. Uh... Yep. Okay. Cool. Uh, oh, James sent me a, a photo of restoration he did on a Yak cell. So yeah. we're, gonna, we're gonna take a look at that. It is a moment here. Um, <laughs> DJ Sergio. Says I have not leveled up enough to get to Damascus. I'm still level 20, and Damascus is level 50 at least. <laughs> we got some RPG fans here. Hello. Right, let's grab this photo from James here. Um, yeah. So Sen is going to try a full face polish with San Piru for yeah. for the call down when they get to it. All. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for all the tips. Cool. And those yaksels, and especially those um, mostly machine sharpened knives, yeah. uh, they will have much less on low spots. So making it the uh, even look is much easier. Yeah, um, right. uh, I've actually got a photo from James here. So I've actually I've never seen a yaksel before. I know it sounds dumb, but I'm not very good at researching other brands. So that's the finish that James did, which looks awesome. Try not to kill the camera here. Turn this that looks really nice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he he sent me that picture. Oh, he did. Yeah, yeah nice. Did. That's that's worth yeah. being proud of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that that I believe is with the powder and all that. So that's very cool. Here, I'm just gonna show the uh, this little progress right here. You see a lot more shinier than uh, it was. Yeah. Before. Oh yeah. So this is what's going to happen on the knives that's been uh, acid, um, acid etch, right? When you try to thin the knife with the acid etch, it will just strip that the uh, the thin layer of the place that's been etched, then expose more of the shiny part. Right, okay. So what I'm going to do is gonna use Sergio Otto says he will stick to uh, Mikaki, Kurochi, and Shiji for a few more years and then mm -hmm. level up. <laughs> cool. So which stone are you on now? This is the uh, Shafton 5. You can just choose whatever stone that you like. Yeah. Um, what I do is the uh, I do the progression. Started from 220 grit. Uh, this is the, uh, again, 500. Because I will... Um, Roughs up the uh, the surface with the uh, the sandpaper later on. I don't really have to polish all the way up, especially the acid etching, because the um, 
it will uh, it will, it will rust up the uh, finish anyways. And yeah, James did do that with the Suri Hero Powder. It looks awesome. Yeah. Okay, according to James, it's not a very fine job. I think it's a fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Job. So he pops his shoulder out. I hope you uh, Ooh, that that's... heals quickly. Maybe maybe take a break from sharpening so you can heal properly. <laughs> but yeah, I, I I thought it was like such a good find. <laughs> yeah. We 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 think it's like such a good find to find that the uh, find that the so hero polishing gone down. Yeah, that's a very specialized product that we've done. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's very, super specialized. Mm -hmm. We don't get like you know we don't get that many. Yeah, but right. we, we get enough that you know people like um enough like your cells. Yeah. <laughs> so hero makes pretty interesting products. Um, they had this a uh, leather strap that we try to bring in because like super small leather strap comes super handy and comes mm -hmm. with that actually comes with the uh, chromium oxide. Um, they had a problem with the uh, product development. Oh they, really? Yeah, I mean, they they should be fine in Japan, but they didn't work in the place like Calgary. It's just yeah, it dry. It's yeah. super dry. And I mean, like, finally, we just got some rain, but it's just been super, super dry. And if you leave that the leather like paddle um, out for two weeks, yeah, the wood on the base the shrunk so much so that the uh, there the um, the leather will just shrink it up. Yeah, because it just goes. Yeah, and, and then it just doesn't work well. It's not flat. Yeah, anymore. it's yeah, it's, yeah. The wood splits sometimes. And like it, it makes it so much more hard to strop, right? When yeah. you strop them, there is a little hump. Yeah, and you cut. Yeah, so <laughs> we. For those of you watching from other countries, uh, most of Western Canada has been very hot and dry, and that leads to forest fires. And so for the last two months, our skies have just been <laughs> gray, yeah. gray and cloudy. Yeah, gray and cloudy. Smoky. It not... smells like smoke now. Yeah. Well, hopefully it clears up. Oh, just the wind direction, right? Yeah. But um, yeah, well, for those of you who may be living in those areas, I um, feel really sorry for. Yeah, I hope everybody, we have any that, yeah. fans of mainland BC or, I mean, even parts of Alberta. It's oh, right Okanagan, there. right? The, cool. That's a terrible like, yeah. place right now. So yeah, yeah be safe. Yeah. That's, um... All right, so. If it's coming over to show off, you see that the you know big color change, right? Yeah. You know shine. And yeah, it I'm, looks like two different knives. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is from here, I'm going to actually sand down the whole, uh, even this dark spots here, because I want to make this as even as possible. So you're saying the whole thing? Yeah, whole thing. Yeah, just yeah. so you get a consistent thing. Exactly, because. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of coarser uh, sandpaper, and yeah, you can actually see. Just gonna a few strokes. Oh yeah, that's a big difference already. Yeah. Well, apparently it's even dry in Vancouver, which is kind of insane. Oh. And Tyler, apparently living in a hotel. I hope you didn't have to evacuate. Oh. I dropped my Nigara on my wallet the other day. <laughs> I hope your wallet's still intact. Those Nigaras are pretty sharp. Sorry to hear you're stuck in a hotel. I'm going to take a little bit of a time off uh, in a couple weeks. Yeah, right. And uh, visiting some of the, uh, hopefully, Vancouver and uh, Island. Oh, nice. Which I've never, where I've never been to. So. You haven't been to the island? No. Oh my god, it's amazing. You know what? I, I have been living in Canada for 15... I don't know how long. Yeah. I've been living here for quite some time. But only province, rather than Alberta, I have really been to mm -hmm. is... Well, well, Vancouver. It's like I, I've been as far west as Vancouver. Yeah. Um, but not on the island. Yeah, East right. is terrible. Um, <laughs> I have been to Ottawa. We have store right. in Ottawa. Right. But it was the uh, work. Yeah, right. Yeah, you don't really get to see. No. You see a couple of bars and a couple of restaurants. And that's exactly, in yeah. store. And we just got stuck in the hotel, right? Yeah. And doing all the, you know, planning and everything. It was yeah. fun. 
but I can't really say I've been to Ottawa. Yeah. Same reason I can't really say I've been to Germany because when yeah right <laughs> like you yeah. you you've done the same. Yeah, I, I, I've been to Frankfurt, which is no offense to any Germans watching. I think the worst part of Germany. Well, I mean, like you know, it was fine. It's like you know, oh, yeah. you get to see some of the uh, newer buildings and such, and oh, you know, sure. you, you. But basically, we're there for the uh, trade yeah, show. Yeah, you spend four days in the convention hall. And yeah, and, and everyone speaks English. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly right. Everyone speaks English there, and like English or Japanese for for that yeah, matter. Yeah, the only times I had to speak German was asking for change in a store and uh, at a bar. Oh. <laughs> But well, we didn't even go to the bar that uh, requires any German. Right, yeah. I mean, a lot of them do speak English. I, yeah. just, I, I used to know German, so I was trying to flex, ah, flex a little bit that I remember. Right, right, right. But yeah, like, but I, I can't really say, oh, I've been to Germany. Like, eh, not really. Yeah, I know. Like, it was only... But yeah, the island's really cool. There's a lot of there's a lot of beautiful stuff out there. It's yeah. a totally different place from i mean it's completely different from alberta yeah, yeah. it's like a different country there's rainforests and yeah where are you guys going we're doing that the uh, whole island uh wow. road trip so awesome. um no whole like we'll all go as far north as campbell river yeah and the yeah victoria oh, Tofino. That's, that's only three hours from yeah Florida. and Tofino and yeah, yeah. There's, like there's a cool uh, aerial museum in uh comox yeah it's kind of just south of Camber river a bit it's a nice mountain mount washington you can hike up uh, or take gondola up oh. by Camber river oh yeah yeah but i'm pretty stoked that's pretty exciting except the part that i have to drive to vancouver on one like in one day yeah which is for those of you who are not really familiar with the geography canada is big <laughs> So um, Calgary to Vancouver is about probably 13 hour drive straight, I think. So I, some, that's something that I'm not super keen, keen on, but be fine. Anyways, here is a little bit more even out look on the blade. Mm -hmm. Get the whole thing kind of looking consistent. Yeah. So it's on the back here. You see here? Good, I think. Um, I usually, when I acid etch them, mm -hmm. I actually, like this is about 400 grit uh, sandpaper. I usually finish here. I don't really have to go all the way to like 1,000. Yeah, right. Uh, you could, but you are basically um, etching your steel, makes it a little bit more um dark rough and it basically melts the steel anyways mm. so i don't usually have to do much of polishing because polishing will just go um go away <laughs> really quick right yeah right. so what i'm going to do is just going to replace here i'm doing we're doing pretty good okay we're uh, it's about an hour oh, nice. um okay just do you want to recap? Uh, our buddy Blank Blank just joined us, yeah. and uh, uh, so just do you want to recap really quick what you did on that Kumo? Yeah, yeah. We haven't actually done the acid edge yet. No, the the fun part is not done yet. Uh, so Kumo, I have sharpened the bevel. You can see the very little bit of the color difference. Yep. But I also uh, sand it. You, with using uh, sandpaper and made it look pretty nice and even here. Okay, so as on the other side, um, this knife will be on the grass. Yeah, you just did a really basic thinning and then just a, a yep. nice even sanding. And Tyler Leach uh, had a funny comment. He said, uh, he said, to the untrained eye, that knife would look ruined. Uh, mm -hmm. bring, bring it back to life. Yes. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put the gloves on. Um, safety first. Safety first. It's not going to. Um, it's not going to do like that bad. Um, yeah, even, it's not if like you touch it, yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. it's not going to burn your skin yeah. or anything like that. But the, it's just really nice, so and it, it can actually right. stain uh, pretty good. As well. Yeah, right, right. So. There's a little bit of liquid that's like sitting right here. This is a uh, ferric chloride with the um, with the vinegar, uh, just the a little bit of solution there. 
I usually keep them in uh, the little PV, PVR, PVR tube, tubes. The, oh, uh, PVC. PVC. Yeah. That's a PVR. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of blacksmiths here too. Yeah, yeah, I kept them before, and I got leak. Yeah. I decided to just uh, temporarily move it to here. So it's kind of inconvenient because I can't really soak whole blade. Right. But the uh, I'll show you how, how they look. Because yeah. here, it's nice and shiny. What I'm going to do today is actually going to a uh, you know use the, the, the this, whatchamacallit, what's this, paper towel, and do, Just do a wipe. swiping. Yeah. OK. 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 Ready? Ready? Yeah, ready? Yeah, I'm Let's ready. See here. Is it going to be like magic? Yeah. It's not a magic yet. No, it just looks yellow. <laughs> you can actually so you just want like a good even coat. Yeah. Okay. We you need, can we dip need, like, it. We need a special uh, etching paintbrush for you. Yeah. So that, yeah, the ones that doesn't, doesn't what you call it, the... Uh, Ruin the, no metal parts. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah, I guess that's important. Silicone, uh, silicone base. Yeah. Pressure. So basically, what I do is the uh, just uh, this one here because I don't have enough depth to soak this in. Yeah. I just wipe this and see the the color changes. Yeah. I mean, it it's about as fast as a Polaroid. Yeah. If you actually look here, yeah. you can Nathan. You may be able to actually. Uh, Zoom Let's in zoom in a little bit. Let's do it. Because we got high tech here. Woo! Look at that. So this here, nice and like nice and black. I think it's pretty nice and even color here. Yeah. And the back, it's still nice shiny where the, the solution is not touched. Yeah. I do it a little bit more um, than what I like. I do a little bit more to the uh, dark, dark side. The dark side. <laughs> the uh, you underestimate the true power yeah. of the dark side. I uh, try to just make it a little bit more darker than what I what I like to see, and I will just even it out with the uh, sandpaper after. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna do it the back side here. Uh, Tyler Leach had a question about mm -hmm. what you're doing right now. The very top of the blade, mm -hmm. where it attaches to the handle, like the tanning there, yeah, yeah. wasn't ground away. I'm guessing like sanded. Uh, will the acid damage that at all? Which one? Yeah. This part? Uh, yeah. The part that I, I left it there is like almost like um, you can like take the handle off and you know, acid its whole, the whole thing. thing. Okay. Uh, I decided to leave it there a little bit so that the – Use it as more like a color reference. Oh, yeah, smart. So that so you I, don't etch it too much or like it doesn't stand yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. Because the goal is to get the knife looking like new, the, essentially. Yeah, right? as even as possible, right? Yeah. So. That's, I mean, at least for us when we're sharpening at, at knifeware, unless somebody requests otherwise, we often use a, a dis, like a, a, a knife out of the case as a reference point um, as far as like how a specific maker would thin their knife or yeah, yeah. bevel or etch it or Whatever. So it actually looks pretty good now on the both sides. Yeah. yeah this side good. is pretty good. Looks like Kumo. Yeah. Looks like Kumo to me. The edge gets really. Um, Do you need to have it all? <laughs> so it's not like yeah. it's not like it happens in seconds and you have to be super like. No, no. Like also, we, we made a solution that's a little bit more um, solution that's a little more diluted, a little yeah. right. So here, because it's been acid etched, it's uh it's not really food safe right now. <laughs> right, it's a good point. What I'm going to do from this point, I'll use the uh, ammonia Windex. Mm. It's the uh, acid, yep. alkaline, they will neutralize the, uh, the acid. Right. The, uh, when you are trying to, when you try to, a, um, when you're going to um, ever throw this out, um, you know, sorry, 
if you're ever going to throw the solution out, yeah. use the um, use this what we call it the uh, well, you know what we call it. Use the uh, baking soda. Yeah. Pour the baking soda into this acid. Yeah. Until it stopped bubbling. Okay, cool. Yeah, until yeah, basically you've neutralized it. Yeah. You just got yeah, you know, water and other stuff. Yeah. You know, uh, I think I should uh, yeah, this a little bit more. Pretty, pretty basic high school chemistry, but yeah. good to know. Yeah. So yeah, that's the uh, and I will sand down a little bit to make. And last thing that you should you should always do is to uh, put the edge on. <laughs> right. Because there's no edge whatsoever right now. And it melted a little bit, so you always have to sharpen the last edge. Yeah, it's eating away at the steel a tiny yeah, bit, right? Yeah, tiny bit. So if you, I'm sure if you see them in the microscope, you see the little bit of uh, things here and there. Yeah, right? yeah, so, a tiny bit of pitting or something. Yeah. Okay, so, cool. Yeah, that's how you, we do the uh, little bit of acid etching. Nice. Right on. Good work. I should probably do the, uh, the backside a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. I want to try now. <laughs> I've never done this before. Oh. But I'm, you know, well, I'm, we didn't start doing it at the store until I didn't work at night. Work right, right, work, so. right. Well, it's fun. Know. It's you know, it's uh, you see that the change in colors yeah. and yeah. You get to put on gloves and play with chemicals. And, and if you depends on the uh, the how thick or the uh, how strong the solution is. Yeah. You can do it like more subtle uh, Damascus etching. Yeah. Or the very fast rapid. Yeah. Um, do you dilute it with just water? This is a you could you could you could okay. we we do it in vinegar, but you could um, the uh, something that you could do is the um, if you leave a stronger solution, if you leave them a little bit longer, what can happen is that you will see more texture as you see the little bumps mm. on the outside of the uh, knife, okay. and once you take because from here it can actually become a I don't know if you remember, but the one of those knives with the um, Asai san. Asai, yeah, it, it was like textured. Like textured, you yeah. Your along and yeah. You those, those acid itch as well. Okay. Just That's left them for one. really long. Yeah. Okay. I've done it once. I left the one of the kumo too long <laughs> in the solution. Oh no. And what happened was the uh, started to actually shine shine up. Right. It was crazy. Huh. It darkens yeah. and I. I was like, I was doing this, and I get distracted going and helping customers or something, bro. Like, yeah, right. And I'm like, <laughs> holy, I had a knife in the back that I had to rescue. And when, and the, when I take the uh, took the knife out, it was the, it was edge was all melted almost. Yeah, yeah. So I had to actually read on the uh, thinning part. Oh, fuck. But the <laughs> look of the knife on the outside was really like um. Like textured, it's got cool. bumps, yeah, and yeah. it's it was not dark anymore. It was like more shine oh, interesting. to it. So it was like, oh, that's how they get. I, I'm sure they came up with the right uh, pH, yeah, um, to get to that point. Yeah, rather, right. Except, yeah, without, probably a lot of trial and error with, without, without ruining their uh, edge too too much, yeah, right? But yeah, I was like, oh, that's how they get the finish. Yeah. Huh, very cool. Yeah. Nice. Anyways. Any questions? Any any yeah, questions? Yeah, we on that? I mean that's all our questions. If anybody we got a couple minutes left if anybody has any more questions that they yeah. want to ask. Um uh yeah, blank blank said deep ed etches do that. Uh mm -hmm. I'll mention again if you haven't joined our Discord, it's a great community space for discussion about uh, knives, food, fermenting, sharpening, all sorts of stuff. You can share your projects, you can ask questions. Um, I had a question actually for you, Nanto. Mm -hmm. If uh, oh, Sergio asked two that I didn't that we didn't answer. Sorry about that. I must have missed them. Um, I will find those. Oh yeah, here we go. Um, those cloths. Do you have to do anything particular to dispose of them? Oh, the. Sure, when, once it's burned, that's okay. Like it, it depends on because in Calgary it's like all landfill. Yeah. Um, in Japan, all those garbages will just go incinerator. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. The ship, like if it's like this solution, yeah. it should be treated much better. Yeah. 
we do a little less on these ones, yeah. but we should probably. If you have a fireplace, just throw them in your fireplace. Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. You could probably just soak them in a bit of Windex and then yeah, yeah. chuck them Exactly, right? yeah. Yeah. Maybe don't put it in your compost. Yeah. No, no. Because <laughs> um, it's very chloride. It's a chlorine and with the, the steel. Yeah, it's nothing too. Yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's not like a super. It's like drain the bleach out, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, DJ Sergiota had a good question here. Uh, hey, Nauto, uh, do you prefer your Gutos with a yo handle or a wah handle? Oh, I like when it comes to my all my Gutos, it's mm -hmm. all Japanese handle, wah handles. My handles are like these handles. Um, yeah, all my gutos are this handle. Yeah. I think I just prefer it because the uh, I get. I think you can pinch it a little bit more farther in with the uh, this Japanese handle. I think that it that's what it is because I have Masashi two ten. Yeah. I have uh, yeah I have Masashi two ten. I have uh, Hado two forty. Yeah. And yeah, all my gutos are all Japanese handle. Only Western handle knife that I have is the uh, um, Tadahusa, the original Santoku with Bubinga handle. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, that's cool, right? Yeah. I guess like I really like the light knives in, yeah. in general. Yeah. And that's like Me totally too. the preference. Um, it's like up to yeah. like, people who, you know, what, what would you prefer type of totally. stuff? Yeah, right? there's, no, there's no wrong answer. It's yeah, just yeah. What, what do you like? Yeah. So, um, uh, DJ Sergio, you said you had another question that I missed, so sorry about that, but I can't find it, so let me know. Um, <laughs> maybe ask it again. Top Dog had uh, had a good one. How thin do you like your blades to be, and do you still etch after a certain thickness? Like you can make it really thin, maybe. The um, so I really like the edge really thin. The uh, my personal preference. If I were to do sharpen my knives, I'll make it very really thin. Um, again. Depends on how long you're going to a uh, etch it for as well. As I kind of mentioned before, if you leave it too long, it will chew up on the edge, right? Yep. And uh, all the thinning will get ruined. So um, I kind of leave it the uh, leave it in kind of mediocre. This happened quite fast, so that the I didn't really I I made it really thin. I didn't really have to. It didn't have to leave in the, the acid for that long. Yeah. Okay. Right, yes. but it really depends. If the knife comes um, as really with the huge chip on them, I don't thin them as much because I'm afraid that's going. That can happen again. But chipping, gotcha. thinning, um, and acid etching is the whole one. <clears throat> I think the the process. So I try to do it, but with a little bit more, basically a little bit more convexity on the heel or mm -hmm. something like that. So there. There could be more um, flexibility and that they, how I thin them. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. A couple more questions here. Tyler Leach has a good one again. Uh, if you could only pick one of your knives to keep, what would it be? <laughs> Masashi Kuroshu 210. <laughs> Masashi Kuroshu 210. You didn't hesitate for a second yeah. there. <laughs> Mine would be probably my Mortaka 240 Yuto. Yeah. It's my first Japanese knife and it's still. It's got like a sentimental connection, but it's also just my most versatile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, one last question here. Uh, this is the one I, I couldn't find from Sergio. Uh, do you like the red Packerwood handle on the Teriyasu Fujiwara Denka or the classic black one better? Hmm. I personally I like, prefer the black. I like the red black yeah. as well. It's more simple. I I like flashy things, but more so in the world of like clothing and that kind of yeah. thing. Uh, as far as my knives, I like a little more yeah. simple and traditional. Only red handle. Yeah, I don't. I, I really like the classy look yeah. to it as well. Yeah, yeah. I know Kevin really likes the red one. Yeah, yeah. Me and Nato like the black one. You heard it here first. <laughs> cool. Cool. Well, well. Thanks for thanks for joining us today. It was a little bit of fun project. Things that you know, you may be may, may not be able to do at home, but something that you know that we are able, we are capable of doing as well as some sort of like you know. It's, you know, this the, the shopping channel a little bit, right? We yeah. do have these uh, polishing compound to bring that the uh, simple Damascus back as well. Mm -hmm. We do sell them online. Suahiro polishing compound. Uh, this is available online as well. Um, so thanks for joining us today. Again, check out the new videos uh, where uh, Mike battles with Salami.
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there will be another new video coming up on next Monday as well. Yeah. Uh, our interview with Mariama san from Hado will be up sometime this week. Um, just need yeah, the proofreading. Yeah. yeah. Let's say tomorrow, proofread of the bad English into better English there. So uh, stay tuned on that. Uh, Massage Sun's interview will be available next week as well. So hopefully uh, you get to kind of enjoy that the little bit of, um, you know, our fun side as well as a little bit more like uh, our serious interview side. Although yeah. Mariam Sun's interview is fun, it ends up with the uh, his collection of t-shirt that he doesn't Oh yeah. He doesn't know how many he has. <laughs> he's got some great t-shirts. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's one of those uh, people who no horse, but he collects. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't think when he collects <laughs> yeah, right. of those people. Like you know? Kevin. Yeah. Like, I know a guy like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's just like, oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we, ha we have to make yeah. sure. Next time I go to visit him, we get some, like, you know, Banff t-shirt. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah like, with, the, with the wolves. Yeah, yeah, there. exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, uh, I'm really excited for that because I really like the nice how those guys have been putting out. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, Anyways, thanks, everybody. thanks for watching, and we'll uh, we'll see you sometime. Yeah, have a great week. Have a great week.